No real introduction needed. You guys know where we are at. Las Vegas, Nevada. I just landed an hour ago. I'm here at the Bellagio, getting ready to play some 510 No Limit. Let's go. All right, before I get started here at the poker, I'm gonna do something that I saw another YouTuber do. His name is Bretsky. But anyway, when he gets to Vegas, he puts down $500 on blackjack. If he wins, he lets it ride. And he could potentially win $2,000. If he loses, he loses $500. So I'm not gonna do 500, I'm gonna do 300, and we'll see how it goes. And the results are in. Lost, no good for us, minus $300. It was fun though, it was a lot of fun. Uh, very first hand we won, um, dealer busted. Second hand I got a 15 against an ace. I hit, I got 17, dealer pulled an eight, and we lost. So we're down 600, no, we're down $300. Gonna get some food, gonna play some poker, and get it back. Back at it again. The Bellagio 510, I have a ton of hours at this location. First hand, I raise King Jack offsuit to $30. I get two callers and go three ways here at a position to 748 all hearts. Now, on this particular board, we have two over cards and the King High flush draw, but it's very wet and connected. I check out a position, middle position player bets $100. I recheck my cards to see if I have a heart, and I do. So I make the call for 100 and the turn card now heads up is the king of spades. I check over to my opponent who goes all in for $2,000. What the heck is going on here? Check. All in. What the heck, man? Oh shit, Lex, what's good, bro? How you been? How are you? Do you not remember? Oh, man, you got good hand. I, I have a good hand. <laughs> Dude, how you been? Not as good now. You don't, you, don't, you don't remember me, huh? I have the king of hearts. $2,000 overbet into roughly a $300 pot. I feel like we're just going to have to fold here. I mean, he could be doing this with a flush, but that seems a little bit unreasonable. Maybe two pair, a straight, or a set. Either way, we're only around 20% equity. I'm definitely not getting the right price to call here with my king of hearts. It is possible he could have the ace x of hearts as well. I just got here to Vegas. I'm only in this pot for $130, so I decided to fold my top pair with the king high flush draw, and my opponent promptly shows me a huge bluff. You want to see or not? Yeah. Yeah? I got nothing. Queen two offsuit with the queen of hearts. My opponent was, in fact, drawing dead. If we could have found the call, we would have won over a $4,000 pot, but great bluff by my opponent. What's up? What's up, man? <laughs> How you guys doing? Next up, there's a passive player from Under the Gun who raises 4x, $40. The button calls 40, and I peel back pocket 10s in the small blind. feel like this is a hand I could 3-bet versus some particular players, but versus an Under the Gun open by a guy who had been limping a lot, for $40, I feel like I could just call here and see a flop. I don't want to 3-bet and have him 4-bet me. I also want to get in the pot with the action player on my left, so I make the call and the big blind action player calls as well. We go four ways to ace, three, deuce, all diamonds. I check, and the action checks all the way around. Turn card king, I check again, and now the big blind action player who just bluffed me with queen deuce offsuit bets $100. I've got pocket tens with the ten of diamonds. I call here, and the river card gives me a flush with the six of diamonds. I check over to him, and he bets out $200. No way I'm ever folding a flush to this guy. I make the snap call and he tells me he's got the nuts. King deuce offsuit with the king of diamonds for the best hand possible. And we lose another one here to our buddy on the left. As you can see, the action player to my left is not afraid to get in there. He's actually playing every single hand he's been dealt in. And now I look down at pocket kings on the button. Okay, it's time for me to win a pot this time. There's a limp for $10. I raised to $50. Small blind action player makes the call, and the limper makes the call as well. We go three ways to three, six, nine, all spades. Pretty great board for me. I've got an over pair. I've got the king of spades. They check to me, and I put out a bet, and only the action player and the small blind makes the call. Now, this doesn't happen too often where you have a crazy action player who's playing every single pot and drinking a lot of money with over $2,000 in a stack. Usually the Bellagio 510 games consist of American regs who are playing tight, European pros who are trying to grind out a living. So with this guy at the table, it's definitely juiced things up a little bit. He makes the call for $80 and the turn card is the deuce of spades. 
giving me the second nuts here. He checks to me again. I bet out for value, and unfortunately, we get no more value here when he makes the fold. And he also decides he's going to call it a night when he racks up his chips. Well, it was fun while it lasted. Enjoy my money, man. About an hour passes. I don't play any significant pots. The table has cooled down a little bit, but it is about to heat up in this hand. Under the gun raises a 30, and with King Jack offsuit facing an under the gun raise in middle position, I like to 3 bet or fold these type of hands. And given the fact that we're only 7 handed, I 3 bet to $100. Small blind makes a cold call for $100. A little bit of background on the small blind is that he seems to be a recreational player who's got around $2,000 in his stack, and it seems like he doesn't want to put in a ton of money without a very strong hand. Earlier, he just called a raise preflop with pocket queens. He check called the river with two pair and another hand as well, so I think I can use that to my advantage later on in this hand. The early position player folds, and now we're heads up against this passive small blind player, to queen, five, six, two clubs. I'm going to be continuation betting almost 100% on a particular board like this. I think the small blind player, when he cold calls a three bet out of position, is pretty capped to middling pocket pairs like pocket eights through pocket jacks. Maybe a hand like ace king, ace queen, ace jack. So I bet out 140 here, trying to get him to fold out those ace high hands that we're losing to. Also, maybe get him to fold out hands like pocket eights, nines, and tens. He does make the call, and the turn card is the eight of spades. Small blind checks to me again, and now I have to figure out whether I want to go for it here in triple barrel or if I want to give up. Given the fact that this particular player didn't seem like he wants to put in a ton of money unless he has a really good hand on this particular board, I don't think he has a set very often. I think it's possible he could have a queen x hand, maybe a flush draw. I'm just going to go for it here. I'm going to bet on the turn, and if he calls and the river card's not a club, I'm going to go for it again and put him all in. So on the turn, I bet $380 setting up a river jam, and my opponent goes into the tank for a very long time. He is thinking over his options. I think if he had pocket queens here for top set, he would probably put in a raise given the fact that there is a flush draw. But eventually, after a minute and a half of thinking here on the turn, he makes the call for 380 going to the river, which is the three of diamonds. Doesn't improve me at all. I do like to have my particular combination of hands. I don't have a club in my hand, so I don't block him from having missed flush draws. He could have a hand like ace queen, king queen, queen jack suited, smaller pocket pairs to the board. All those hands would be in a miserable spot if I put them all in. So I triple barrel bluff here at the Bellagio, my first two hours of the session, and put him all in for $1,500 with just king high. This may seem like a complete suicide bluff. I mean, if he had top pair, he would just snap call, right? Well, like I said before, this guy seems a little bit like scared money. He doesn't want to put in a bunch of money without a very strong hand, so I go for it here as a bluff. It doesn't matter what game I'm playing. It doesn't matter how big the stakes or how small the stakes. When I am bluffing on the river, my heart rate starts increasing. I try to not give anything away. My opponent's looking over at me, trying to get a read. I'm just looking down at the board, staring at the three of diamonds, praying he folds. After two and a half minutes of thinking, he still has not come up with his decision yet. I would never pull this bluff against a player who maybe studies GTO, who will just call all the time with top pairs. However, a GTO player would probably not be calling too often. Three bets out of position. I don't know. I'm just going for it here. I'm kind of clicking buttons. It's my first two hours in Vegas. Let's try to play some big pots. And luckily for us, after three minutes of tanking, my opponent finds the fold. We get this big bluff through, triple barreling it off here with King Jack high, and we take down a decent pot. Next up, there's an under the gun raise to $30. Folds to me in the big blind. I complete for 20 more with queen 10 offsuit. Heads up, out of position to queen 7 deuce. I check and he bets very tiny $20. Versus this small bet out of position with top pair. I elect to raise now to $70. Versus this particular player type. He's a younger Asian battling kind of pro. feel like he's going to be stabbing here with 100% of his range on the flop. I'm going to raise, try to get value from other hands that he'll call me with. Also, maybe allow him to float me light and try to let him bluff me on the turn. Well, he calls $70 and the turn card is the six of hearts. I continue now for an $80 bet 
and surprisingly I get raised by the under the gun player when he makes it $260. This is a very strong line by my opponent. I check raise to flop, I bet the turn, and now he's raising me again. I feel like my queen 10 is probably no good here, but as Jeff Boski would say, what's he repping? And I start to think to myself, what hands can he really have that are playing like this? I mean, from an under the gun raise, he's not gonna have seven deuce. He's probably not gonna have six, seven. He could maybe have aces or kings that play like this, but I feel like those hands would just call here on the turn. He shouldn't have any two pair on this board like queen six, queen seven. I don't know, it's kind of close. Feel like I could fold here, but I also feel like I could call. Maybe he's getting out of line, given the fact that I check raised a flop. He could be trying to bet big here on the turn. I don't know. I think it's a close spot, but eventually I put in $260. I also have the queen of hearts in my hand, so I'm the only person that can have queen x of hearts. I might get a little funky if a heart comes out on the river, which is exactly what happens when the final card is the four of hearts. Backdoor flush gets there, and now I have a decision whether I want to check to him or if I want to turn my hand into a bluff. Ultimately, I decide to turn my hand into a bluff. I feel like if he does have aces or kings here or ace queen, I could put him into a really tough spot if I bet big on the river. Don't think he's going to have many two pairs or sets in this situation. If he was bluffing on the turn, it doesn't matter. He'll just snap fold. The pot is around $700. I decide to lead out now on this river for a $1,100 bet. And right when my chips hit the felt, my opponent snap folds, so it looks like he was just messing around on the turn. He didn't really have that much of a hand, and we do win this pot. After reviewing this hand back, I feel like this is one of the wilder hand histories that I've ever really reported. I check raised to flop, he raised the turn, and then I let out on the river for a 1.5x over bet with just a queen. I would say this is what you would call button clicking where you just kind of click buttons and bet chips and hopefully it works and it did this time. We take this one down in an unconventional fashion and move on to the next hand. Another example of button clicking coming up here when the cutoff raises a 30. I have ace four of clubs on the button and three bet to $100 before the same Asian battling pro re-raises me cold four bets out of the small blind at 350 bucks. Cutoff player gets out of the way, action back over on me, with ace four of clubs, it's not really a hand we want to be going to see a flop with in a four bet pot. We have reverse implied odds if he has a hand like ace queen or ace king. However, I'm around $3,000 effective with this particular player, which is over 300 big blinds deep. We're in position and also I like to battle against players like this. I feel like I can try to use boards to my advantage and I like trying to bluff them. So I make the call and we go heads up here to a gross 977 rainbow board. I say gross because we don't really connect at all here except for a backdoor flush draw, but my opponent shouldn't really connect very well with this board either. He really shouldn't have any 7x in his hands whenever he cold four bets out of the small blind. Highly doubt he's going to have pocket nines either. So when he puts out a bet of $250, I feel like I could float here potentially try to pick up some more equity on the turn, maybe bluff. We'll see what happens. I put in 250 bucks. Turn card 10 of diamonds doesn't bring me any extra equity. If my opponent continues to bet, we're just gonna wave the white flag here and fold our ace high, but that doesn't happen when he checks over to me. So now I have to start to think about what hands that he could have that would cold four bet out of the small blind, bet on this flop, and then check this turn. Hands would probably consist of ace king, ace queen, Ace Jack, Ace Five suited, maybe a hand like Pocket Jacks are checking here for pocket control, maybe Pocket Tens for deception. Highly doubt he's checking Aces and Kings on this board. So I feel like this gives me the green light to potentially bluff him off those better Ace High hands. Maybe he does have Pocket Queens or Pocket Jacks and he's checking for pocket control. In that case, I'm going to bet the turn and then unload the clip on the river. This particular board is going to favor my range way more then it's gonna favor his four bet range. I can have any seven X here. I can have pocket nines, pocket tens. I can have jack eight for a straight. I can have eight six for a straight. So I bluff here for $400. Looking back on this vlog, I am bluffing a lot. I mean, not even sure if I've made a real hand yet so far in this vlog. $400 bet in a four bet pot back over to my opponent. He must have had one of those ace high hands because he folds rather quickly. We take this one down with the ace four of clubs.
Next up, I've got Queen 10 of Diamonds I raised at $30. Small Blind Calls, who is the same player I pulled that big triple barrel bluff earlier on in the vlog with King Jack Offsuit, the player that didn't seem like he wanted to put in a lot of money without a very strong hand. Well, his stack has dwindled all the way down to $250. He does not seem like he's in the folding mood now. Seems a little bit tilted, but when you flop top pair, it's an easy C bet for me. I make it $40 and he calls. Turn cards a brick. He's got about $200 left in his stack. So I announce all in here with my top pair. He doesn't snap call me, which is great, meaning he doesn't have a better hand than me. We are rooting for a call and eventually he does call. We run out this board one time. The river cards a six. Looks clean for me until the small blind shows pocket sixes. Holy crap. He called all in on the turn with pocket sixes and hit a set on the river to beat us with our top pair. We lose a small pot here, and after a couple hours of playing, I am tired and exhausted. Before we close out this vlog, I want to give a little teaser for my next video, which is played at the win, 10, 20, 40, where I play over a $20,000 pot on the last hand of the night. It's one of the most exciting poker sessions I've ever played and definitely one of the most exciting videos I've ever made. Stay tuned for that. August 3rd, 11 a.m. Be ready for that video. It is a must see. I wouldn't say that I have a fear of flying. I just don't like being stuck in a tube 30 plus thousand feet in the air going 500 miles an hour with zero control. So on days that I do fly across the country, it definitely makes me stressed and anxious. And on those days, I like to have a drink. So I decide to head out here to the Las Vegas Strip. It is beautiful on a Monday night. It is hot as hell as well. It's around 110 degrees. I head over down the strip to the Cosmopolitan to the Chandelier Bar where me and a friend buy ourselves a nice cocktail. I get myself the Finishing School cocktail. To be honest, it really wasn't even that good, but it was cool vibes just chilling there, relaxing, having a little bit of a drink. And after a long day of traveling, a three hour delay, five hours in an airplane, five hours at the poker table, I decide to call it a night Got to get some rest for a long week of poker out here in Vegas. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Trying to get to 60,000 subscribers. More videos just like this to come. And until next time, I'll see ya.